How much sex is normal after 50 anyway? Now that Darling Husband and I are in our 50s, specifically 58 and 55, we clock in at about once every two weeks, which is down from about eight months ago when it was once a week. So are we normal? Hey everyone, thanks for joining me. I'm Kay from SexyAfter50.net, the blog about sex, love, and relationships after 50. I used to wonder if DH and I were having a normal amount of sex. I think it's a common worry, especially if you're over 50, but it's not something you discuss with a stranger in the Starbucks line. But if you want hard facts, there are several studies about how often couples have sex, I've summarized some of them in a blog post called How Much Sex Over 50 is Normal, and I will link it below in the description. But let me summarize for you. The average married adult has sex about once a week. This varies with our age, of course, and those in their 20s go at it about 80 times a year, and those in their 60s have sex about 20 times a year. So what does this mean to you and I? To be honest, not much. Let me tell you why. Maybe what we are asking is really this. Could sex be a problem in my relationship? Not enough, not the right kind? Is my relationship in danger if we fall below what is normal? Is my relationship healthy? Because think about it, when do you ask yourself if you are normal or healthy? The answer is when you feel maybe you are not. Perhaps what we should ask is instead this. Do I feel there is a quality in my relationship? Would I say there is quality in my sex life? If your sex life has slowed down somewhat, is that okay with you? And if there's been a drop in quantity, has the quality of your sex life improved? If you answered yes to the second set of questions, you don't need to worry about the concept of normal. Each couple's sex life has its own unique cadence. If you're both satisfied overall and you can communicate relatively easily, you're probably healthy, no matter what your frequency. In our 50s, we start facing some challenges that we haven't encountered before. Family problems, health issues, aging parents, worries about our grown children, finances, and much more. If you've been married for more than, oh, a few minutes, you know daily life with a partner 24-7 is not easy, and that's with someone you love. And in our 50s, our bodies are slowing down to in and out of bed. Okay, enough about that. Let's talk about solutions. There are five ideas I have that relate to sex in your long-term relationships. One, change it up. Sex evolves as we age. We don't have the urges we had at 18 anymore, but that's not to say you can't have fun and grow sexually as a couple. Now is the time to experiment and start a new chapter. Sex can grow repetitive and some amount of novelty is required whether that translates to a couple massage or whipped cream in the bedroom, or maybe my favorite, a new toy. Okay, number two, emotional intimacy is key. If your relationship is not what it used to be, building your intimacy outside the bedroom can help reawaken the spark inside the bedroom. Emotional intimacy is the feeling of security and trust in a relationship that allows you to share deep emotions. It's much easier to preserve a relationship than to rebuild one. Three, a difference in desire levels. If you find that one spouse has a higher sex drive than the other, that's not uncommon at all. If one spouse desires sex and the other spouse does not, it may be an issue that can become chronic and it's best treated by a counselor sooner rather than later. But a difference in desire levels does not necessarily doom your sex life, and it can be negotiated through communication and compromise. This is also one of our issues for DH and I, high desire, me, and low desire, him. 
Four, look back in time. If you're not satisfied with the amount of sex you're having, see if you can pinpoint when a change happened in your relationship. Sometimes a little honest detective work can provide clues on what needs work. And five, check with your doctor. I hope it goes without saying, if you have an issue with your sex life that concerns you, please also speak to your doctor. Many health concerns that affect sex and desire are treatable, but you have to work with your doctor closely. So normal schmormal. I mean, I no longer worry about how often my friends and neighbors have sex. I know that DH and I have our own history, our own desire levels, some physical issues, and changes that have occurred. Right now, we're both pretty happy with how often we have sex. When I get a little frustrated that we're not having more, we talk about it. Talking does not always make sex happen immediately, but it does clear the air until we need to talk the next time. And it preserves the emotional intimacy that we cherish. If you wonder about what normal is, start doing some homework on why you worry about that. Find your own answers and then involve your partner in the conversation. You know what I say, talk to your partner until your ass falls off and then keep talking. If you enjoyed this, a thumbs up is the biggest compliment you can give and I thank you for that. Or leave me a comment, tell me about yourself. Au revoir, let's talk again later.